something that is exciting is that I applied for the UGAs, which if you are like me and had no idea what that was until a couple weeks ago, UGAs is Unified General Auditions, which um, theaters around the United States will host these and they'll have um, auditors come in, which will be agents or different theaters or sometimes like filmmakers or, you know, casting directors. Um, they'll come to a, a theater and then um, they'll have about three or four hundred actors come in and if you're non-union you get about two minutes if you're in the union you get uh, three minutes less than you basically just do a general audition um, you try to showcase yourself you can sing or you can just do monologues and then um, sometimes uh, one of the auditors will try to stop you on the way out and tell you invite you to callbacks or something or maybe you'll get um, an email next day or sometimes you'll get um, asked to come to a hotel room to do uh, a callback, which at first sounded like sketchy to me, but now I know that that's generally how these things work. And sometimes they'll just keep you in mind for the future. And Carson was very sweet and lent me his script, um, Gruesome Playground Injuries, which has been one that I've been mean to read for a while because my college mom, Becky, uh, talked about how much she loved that. And I read it. And I just, I read it all one sitting and I was so moved by it. And there's a scene in there that I just, I, I have a big emotional tug to that scene that um, I know that I'm going to do that. That's at least what I'm planning to do if I get selected to participate in this is um, to do one monologue from Gruesome Playground Injuries and then another one from The Foreigner, which is actually the first time that I uh, did a play in a regional theater and was hired to do so was when I was in The Foreigner, I was Ellard Sims. We are on our way to Theatre Puget Sound's UGAs, and the gems of today are Rhythm Marines of Life by Regina Spector. I gotta love driving to Seattle. Also, I'm crashing at my ex's place tonight. <laughs> Connections, wherever you can make them. The last couple of hours have been tumultuous, to say the least, in anticipation, and my stomach is just not agreeing with me. But that's fine, because I feel like the adrenaline pump is going to help me do better, and um, I can't help but calm myself down by either looking at this picture of a morbidly obese cat wearing Calvin Klein underwear, or um, humming the song Cup of Roasted Coffee from... The guy who didn't like musicals by Star Kid. Get your cup of poison coffee, your toxic cup of Joey. We'll get. I'm in the building, and there are these like cool, like artwork things all over the place, and I can't vlog in public. That's so fucking killed it. Okay, so that went way better than expected. Um, I went right about on time. Uh, of course, I wish I could have been a little more emotional in like the last one, but that's like such a trivial thing to be upset about. But I hit my mark. I remember my words. I did not let the person ahead of me get into my head listening to them. I just tuned it out and thought about my old roommate Leah laughing as her hamster LaFonda, the space hamster, was crawling up her leg. <laughs> And that helped a lot. And people in the waiting room were really weird. Like they were, oh gosh, <laughs> we could dissect their pre-audition rituals later. And you have to reward yourself for doing something scary every now and then. So I'm deciding to reward myself with a milkshake after that and this person parked like also, you can't really see it, but that's the base of the sea needle. I mean, space needle over there. Gosh darn it, SpongeBob has me saying sea needle instead of space needle. I just want to do a quick follow up on my Unified General Auditions audition. Um, this one cat is also new, by the way. 
Otis. Right. Otis is the new cat's name. They were holding these auditions last Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And I auditioned on Tuesday. Um, now, my friend auditioned on Wednesday, and he got asked to attend callbacks for a Shakespeare show um, on Thursday or Friday. I don't remember. Um, and he wasn't able to attend that because he obviously had just come back into Spokane so that he could go to class. And um, I did that bad thing that most actors are guilty of where you're like, my friend got called back. How come I did it? Am I not good enough? What was funny is he, he said he didn't even audition with anything from Shakespeare. He had just auditioned with um, some very contemporary things. He like sang a song and did a monologue. And then yesterday, Monday, I got two emails. One was offering me a lead in a musical, a new musical, which actually sounded pretty cool. It was about suicide prevention, and um, I really liked the character and the plot they sent me. However, um, it conflicts with um, other bookings that I have in Spokane right now, and that one would require me to leave my jobs right now to go to Seattle for a couple months to do the show, and um, I, I can't do that right now because what I'd be getting from that wouldn't be enough to sustain me living in Seattle. So I unfortunately had to turn that one down. Later on, I got invited to auditions for um, this interesting sounding play. Actually, my friend also got invited to these and um, they're permitting me to send in a tape. It would be a summer gig. Rap legend stole. <laughs> we'll see what comes of that. There's a chance I probably wouldn't be able to do that one either just because I have, um, I already have a theater booking in September. So um, if you're thinking about the Unified General Auditions, I'd say definitely go for it. My plan was to go in with no expectations and um, I didn't. And I think that helped me do well. And um, you never know, maybe you'll get an offer afterwards. Um, I wasn't really expecting it, although what I think is we all feel like we're never good enough, but you just have to do it anyway and let um, other people make that judgment call for you. I was hesitant to, um, I didn't have anyone help me with my auditions and I thought that would probably have been the smart thing to do, but um, I just decided to follow my heart with that in my brain and uh, it worked out well. And say hello to the world, Otis. <laughs> okay. Till next time. Uh, hello world. Uh, it has been a few months since the UGAs and I wanted to do a formal recap of my experience. Um, please ignore any ASMR purring throughout the video as they are both roaming through my room. Uh, so, to conclude, when I went to the actual UGAs, um, I spent the first three hours that I was there sitting in a Starbucks, freaking out, and I was trying to pump myself up every hour on the hour by, um, watching a video from the Star Kid musical called Firebringer. This character, Chorn, from a musical called Firebringer, singing some solo called I Am Chorn. <laughs> and I kept telling myself that I am the alien cape person and I can do this. Uh, so I found my parking. I paid by phone, which is very convenient in Seattle. Um, I then walked into the building. So I paid... So I left Starbucks, I drove to the venue, and I paid... So I left Starbucks, I found parking near the venue, and I paid for my parking. And then I walked inside, and there was uh, the box office is where we were supposed to sign in. And then uh, you would walk by uh, this table where they had, you would sign in for shit. <laughs> so I walked in, um, and contrary to what I thought based on the people in front of me were doing, you did not walk to the box office to check in. You walked past the box office to this card table where they have all these forms and you sign in. 
and then you have the option to go to a loud practice room or a quiet practice room, and I didn't feel like being around a bunch of people singing and dancing, that's why I didn't study musical theater. <laughs> um, so I went to the quiet practice room, and they had no pens, so I had to go and calm down Otis. <laughs> I had to go and get a pen and then start the sign-up stuff, and it was basically like a little black box theater you were sitting in on all the chairs. And when I was sitting in there, um, a lot of people were doing very strange things for their preparations. Um, inserts that here. What was nice was when I walked to the little table to sign in, they had a monitor showing the actual stage that you'd be performing in. It had a live camera feed to it that helped assuage one of my fears where uh, when I felt like I was bombing in my last audition for Dog Sees God, it was because I didn't know what the room was going to look like when I walked in and I didn't realize how much power that would have over me. So knowing what the room looked like was great. When I was walking down the hallway to the quiet practice room, they hadn't quite started the auditions yet, so the doors were open to the side of that room where all the auditors were sitting in, and uh, it was kind of like a, uh, what would you call it? And then what I did a few times was uh, I quietly mouthed the words to my monologues to myself while timing it on my phone, and I was consistently eight seconds under, which was good. And then they called, um, they, they have one person on deck. Every time that someone's in the room, they have another person waiting in the hallway outside of the audition space. And there's a small curtain. You can actually see the person before you performing. Um, I didn't really care to pay attention to what the person was doing in front of me. However, what I realized, um, it was this uh, one actress, and she was sitting on a chair doing her monologue, and she seemed kind of nervous. So I'm like, okay, if she's nervous, then um, that's going to make me seem a little bit better if I'm calm. So uh, I turned my phone off. I did not want it to go off. Um, but I went in as soon as she walked out. You give it about 10 seconds, and then you walk in. And you have to walk in with your best audition face, just smiling and waving to them. And I walked center, and I said, hello, my name is John Reddy and I'm doing two monologues for you today. The first is from a play called The Foreigner by Larry Shu, and the second is from Gruesome Playground Injuries by Joseph Ajeev. I put my chair center stage, sat down for a second, and they don't start timing until you start your first monologue or song. So I put down my chair, took three seconds, and then in the, the empty row that was right in front of me, um, in that chair right in front of me, I visualized my scene partners. My first scene partner that I was imagining in my seat was someone named Lynn that I actually did The Foreigner with several years ago, um, who my character in the scene was interacting with. Don't rip the curtains off the wall, Dennis. Then the second scene um, is a little more uh, dramatic. It's actually this character confronting his best friend about a time when she was coerced having sex that she didn't want to have. And uh, the way that uh, I beforehand was thinking about the scene was just to some non-specific girl, but then I decided, okay, I'm gonna imagine my real-life sister um, in that context, which, you know, she has not had that experience, but, um, sorry, I'm hurting cats. So I changed the character's name from the script to my sister's name. When I actually got to that part in the monologue, um, one of the auditors turned and started talking to the person next to them, and, and that was just one of those little moments that I was actually aware of the audience, but most of the time, um, while I was directing everything in a way that they could see and hear me, um, I myself was not actually really interested in what they were doing. I was more interested in imagining my scene. Dennis, please do not play with the tripod. Some habits die hard. I walk in, I say, hi, my name is John, blah, blah, blah. I sit down. Can you say fork? Get off the curtain. Nope. You are not allowed on that curtain. Cat fight. <laughs> I also finally got the schedule for a film that I'm in, and I booked the biggest project I've ever booked through my agency, and I'm not allowed to talk about it right now, but it's very exciting. And this summer, I'm actually going to be shooting another movie. Um, this one, I'm shooting a short in hopes to gain money to shoot a feature-length film. And uh, I am almost finished fundraising for it out of my own personal bank.
but so many great things have happened since then, I'm so glad that I tried out for it, and I hope anyone that's nervous or has questions about it uh, can watch this video and hopefully get some answers, or at least feel a little bit nervous, or just a little bit entertained at the sounds of my cats fighting. Okay? Until next time, and break a leg.